This video is about squaring up and tramming a DIY CNC mill. A lot of the information you can find online about tramming mills is uh, focused on mills that people have bought and then need to tram. For those types of mills, you have some sort of guarantee that the manufacturer has squared up the mill so that the axes run perpendicular to each other. And the tramming that you're doing is just making sure that any of the any adjustments that you might have made have been correctly squared afterwards. But for my purposes, I need to think about whether or not the axes are perpendicular to each other. And I've boiled down the steps into four steps here. The first one is to make the X travel perpendicular to the Y axis. When I talk about the Y axis, I mean the Y axis of travel. The perpendicularity of these axes is relative to the direction of travel. The second step is to align the table to that XY plane that you defined in step one. Step three is to make the Z travel perpendicular to the XY plane. That's like getting the column squared up. And then the final step is to make the tool rotation axis parallel to the Z travel. That's like getting the head trammed in. So here's a drawing of my mill. And here's an exaggeration where the X axis is shown to be not perpendicular. And so this is the first adjustment that I need to make. To do this, I set up uh, a dial indicator with the 1, 2, 3 block. You're going to use the squareness of this 1, 2, 3 block as the reference to determine squareness of your axes. The first step is to just make sure that the 1, 2, 3 block is first off aligned with the x-axis of travel. This is like uh, truing up a vise. Once you've done this, I take the dial indicator and then put it on the perpendicular surface and then run the other axis, in this case the y-axis, and make sure that you're seeing no dial movement. If you are seeing dial movement, that means that the axes are not perpendicular. Here, uh, my x-axis was out of perpendicular by about two and a half thousandths of an inch per inch. Unfortunately, it wasn't very easy to adjust this on my mill. It's one of the things I realized is that this is sort of a design flaw because I've got the linear rails on top of this aluminum plate that acts as uh, the base for the x-axis rails. And you can't see it in this drawing, but in the next one where I show just that plate, uh, I have this, the bolt holes here. And you can see that the bolt holes for the linear rails overlap the bolt holes that are countersunk for the bolts that go down into the bearing blocks below. And so I can't loosen the screws and make adjustments to the, the y-axis sitting on the bearing blocks until I've removed the uh, linear rails. And if I remove the linear rails, then I no longer have that reference um, that I was using to determine squareness. So what I ended up having to do was just keeping the, the uh, bolts that are covered not very tight, just keeping them sort of loose so that I could still tap the axis around then get it where I wanted it to to be, and then the other uh, bolt holes, the other two per bearing block, I would tighten down tightly so that it wouldn't move and it would lock in that adjustment. Of course, that means it's a little bit less rigid because I don't have four bolts per bearing block that are really tight. I only have two of the four that are tight, and the other two are only semi-tight. Okay, so the next adjustment is to make sure that the table is aligned to the XY plane. You can imagine here the table being misaligned. Uh, it can be leaning back, it can be leaning left or right. In my case, um, it was surprisingly level, uh, which I was surprised at because this is just the mill finish uh, of the aluminum stock. I never actually faced this down. Um, and although it looks pretty good here on the dial, uh, as soon as I go further to the left, it actually it goes way down. And that's because this, uh, this platform is actually sort of bowed. One option would be to try to shim to fix this, but I didn't want to shim to fix this because uh, since it's bowed, I can't actually shim it. Uh, I need to make it flat first. Uh, and in the process of making it flat, I can also take the opportunity to make sure that it is completely uh, aligned with the XY plane by just surfacing it. So I actually just uh, used the spindle itself to cut, to cut a flat plane into the table. And I took off just about five thousandths of an inch here. I made uh, a lot of passes I only did an eighth of an inch step over, and so it didn't matter if my head wasn't perfectly trammed in and square yet, because a small step over ensured that any error was minimal. And here's what it looked like after doing that. 
and it ended up being quite flat, well within a thousandth of an inch. Alright, so the next step was the z-axis travel, and I want to make the z-axis travel perpendicular to the xy plane. So you can imagine the head being uh, misaligned with the z-axis travel, and you can also imagine the z-axis itself being misaligned, and in reality it's a combination of both. And so I need to fix both of those. And uh, first I, I decided to make sure that the z travel was perpendicular. And to do this, you need to put a dial indicator that is moving with the Z uh, carriage. And it's not actually important that it be mounted in the spindle. You could have mounted it to the spindle mount or, or anything else that is traveling up and down with the spindle. Um, but I decided to make a simple spindle lock here out of uh, 3D printed plastic. It wasn't very important that it was super rigid. It just needed to be fixed in some way to the spindle. Um, I could have definitely attached it to the mount if I had bolt holes in the mount. So once, uh, once I had my dial test indicator attached to the z-axis, I took a 1, 2, 3 block and put it flat down onto the table. Uh, and you see I have a little clamp there holding it down. And with it flat here, and with uh, the squareness of this 1, 2, 3 block, I can run the indicator up the, uh, the side of it. And this will tell me how far out my z-travel axis is from my x-y plane. And that was about a thousandth of an inch out per inch. This is indicating only a slight error in rotation of my column. To fix this, what I did is I actually just moved the mill off the edge of the table to where I could get at the bolts that go uh, through the base into the column. Uh, and then I would loosen these bolts just slightly, enough to fit some steel shim stock underneath. And then using that, I would clamp the bolts back down and then remeasure. This shim stock comes in um, thicknesses uh, in increments of one thousandths of an inch and it's pretty precise. So after adjustment and shimming, it's only about uh, just under a thousandth of an inch per two inches. So it's about uh, a little under half the error that I had before. So the next source of error that I looked at was leaning forward or backwards. And to measure this, I just moved the dial test indicator around so that I was running it uh, against the other uh, surface of the one, two, three block. And this was very out of uh, squareness by uh, about 10 thou per two inches or about five thou per inch and here it is after adjustment just about perfect and then the final adjustment I need to make is the head I need the head to be parallel with the movement of the z-axis and it's actually not important that the head is parallel to the z-travel it's important that the tool rotation axis is parallel to the z-travel so to try to most directly measure that, I took a half inch gauge pin, put it into a half inch collet. The dial indicator is resting against the gauge pin as I move the z-axis up and down. So here I'm uh, out by about four thousandths per inch along this axis. And here it is after adjustment, just about perfect. This is pretty easy to do by just uh, adjusting the mounting bolts, loosening the mounting bolts for the spindle mount. Uh, where it mounts to the head, and then um, just adjusting it by hand, tapping it by hand until it was correct, and then uh, bolting it down. So as for adjustment in the uh, in the other way, so the nod essentially of the head, I did the same setup, I just moved the dial indicator around to the front of the gauge pin. And this wasn't out very far, it was only maybe in a thousandth per inch out, uh, off at most. Um, and I found that most of the error was just due to the uh, the mount not being perfectly snugged up against the head. So actually all I needed to do is loosen the bolts and clamp them, clamp the head, uh, the mount really tightly to the head and then uh, clamp the bolts back down again. Uh, and this actually took out that little bit of error. And now I have a square mill. I'll be able to more accurately mill things that have uh, perpendicularity to them.